Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs, and this is example 17 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. This time we're doing the Georgia Shopper, which is, it's actually headquartered out of America's Georgia, but it has a location here in Fitzgerald, Georgia, which is maybe a mile or so from where I'm at here at 416 West Cypress Street. So this is the one right around the corner, 200 East Orange Street around that area. The five steps that I walk through when I'm organizing a digital marketing strategy, the first one is the research phase. And these are unresearched thought exercises, each of these examples, which this is the 17th example thus far. So they don't do much research, right? <laughs> but I do kind of like to lay out, okay, this is how the research phase works, even though I'm not actively like doing a bunch of research and talking to customers and talking to the staff and sitting down and recording a conversation with the owner about the origin story and about what they see for the brand. And, you know, just none of that's happening. But the status quo snapshot is where my research always starts. And so you, if you wanna do this on your own, then that's where you would start. And the idea is to paint the picture for myself, which allows me to paint that picture for the client as well, right? Of where we're starting from. Not using rose colored glasses, not trying to just critique and tear everything down either. Like we wanna look at it from a, a purely business standpoint. So you know, a couple of the questions I'm answering are, do they have a website or they is it mobile responsive? If they do have a website, do they have a shopping cart? Like, can you buy from your phone on their website? Do they have an email list? And when was the last time that they emailed them? Social profiles, where's the engagement happening? What are they doing that's working? What are they doing that's not working? Is it all organic? Are they doing paid? on social as well if they're doing paid is that focused on branding because they could be doing all of it right it just it depends on the individual context and just what's called for to meet the goal that the individual point of view is put together right so what i'm doing though is i'm putting together a swat chart it's the strengths and weaknesses as well as the opportunities and threats of this individual brand so when you type Georgia Shopper in, you do get it at the top. As you can see, there's some SEO opportunities, obviously, but they do have a website and I don't believe it's WordPress, but I didn't really check. They do have a mobile version, it seems, and it's on HostGator. It didn't seem to take too long to load, so that was a good thing. They're, they're dominating, obviously, the top couple of spots. I mean, it is their brand name. So the West Georgia Shopper is in another area of Georgia and just kind of an equivalent, I guess, right? So they have their different counties and then the Georgia Shopper has this these counties, including the one where I live. So the goal of this strategy is to build the Georgia Shopper brand and obviously revenue, right? So the customer point of view is in each of the different five editions. So the Ben Hill Irwin County is one edition. Tifton Tiff County is the second edition. Turner County is the third. Macon, Dooley, and Crisp are all together, and they're the fourth. And then Worth County is the fifth edition. So that's the customer point of view. It's just the way that they've been distributing up until now is the circulation numbers is basically just the, the number of addresses within each of the different counties because they force ship it to everybody, right? Through the different post offices or whatever. So that means that advertisers within each of those different edition areas, as well as consumers in each, right? So the pressing problem is just the frictionless access and the it's the for the advertisers it's both to the consumers because they can reach them through the shopper right currently but they can't reach them at all digitally through that being able to easily go to you know on their phone and just and real quickly put together a quick ad being able to put together a paid ad going ahead and paying for it etc it's not happening currently the way that i would approach it is i would add and this is unresearched again but I see the opportunity as being that, you know, one of the strengths that they have is they already have relationships that they built that I'm speaking about the Georgia shopper that they built with these advertisers in each of the addition areas over the years, over the decades at this point. So adding in the creative and digital media, just starting to ramp that up 
there's a boatload of opportunity there because they already have those built-in relationships. So now understand that I'm going in understanding that in my view, one of the weaknesses, so to speak, would be that they wouldn't have any creative in-house really at all. And they definitely don't have any real digital acumen in-house, but finding that and developing that and growing that, it's not too much to ask to start adding that. And it's a completely new revenue source. They can start offering Facebook ads, Google ads, literally whatever that they wanted. And they're serving the same customer and but they're able to give more of a comprehensive approach as opposed to what's currently just the mailer, right? Now, the access would be through the website and then obviously their normal hours of operation. They'd still you know, publish these once a week, but then on top of that, they'd be able to have their staff running campaigns through Facebook ads and or other stuff that are displaying creative contextually to people in the different edition areas for specific advertisers. And the value is that there's better reach for the advertisers and they build on relationships. They already have built trust with that advertiser. So they're, they already have that trust and now they're able to kind of go on and put more money into their marketing, into their business. Right? So the education would be, I would make the Georgia shopper brand be the media source for content specific to each of those edition areas, right? There's really no leading media. I mean, there's the paper, the Herald leader here in Fitzgerald, but there's not really a digital local voice that is really just in control of the media for this area. So there's a huge opportunity for that. It's one that I've been working on filling over the years, but they would definitely be able to take that and run with it would be the idea. So the media plan, at least tentatively unresearched, how I would approach it is that I would divide the audience for these. And this is for media that they're creating on behalf of building the Georgia shopper brand. I would focus on advertisers and consumers separately. And then each of those, you're going to get into different worldviews, really. Like where are they a 70 year old grandfather that's making $250,000 a year in this area, you're going to speak to very differently than someone that's making 50,000. That's the idea though, is you know, start talking them directly because you can continue to do this, but you can start at that digital side as well. And giving people that contextual media that you've created in house with smartphones and so forth. I mean, it's just super, it's never been easier to actually become your own media company. And so a current media company, adding in the creative and adding in the digital media distribution as well is just obvious opportunity in my mind. So the show format, I'd at least start with the spotlight on advertisers, spotlight on people and community events from each of the different edition areas. And I would do weekly for each of the five editions. So the, the Georgia shopper brand would be doing five a week one in each of the different edition areas where I'd start. Now, the media creation is the process. I would plan it in a slide deck, record the video using Soapbox by Wistia, like I'm doing here. You can edit it, publish it, and, and I'm using iMovie to do the editing. And then you publish and distribute the video. When I say publish, that's on the website. So that'd be on the Georgia Shopper website in my mind. Distributing it would be to wherever they wanted to upload it natively, if that's Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever. The deliverable would be you'd have the full length video, but then you'd have a bunch of other pieces that would be such as a one minute version for Instagram that is a vertical video, an under 10 minute LinkedIn video version so that you can upload it natively. If it's over 10 minutes, you can't. And then there's any number of other different extracts that you can pull, including written, including images with quotes, et cetera. So the media distribution, I would focus on Wistia for the embedding on the actual brand website and then the facebook brand page and youtube definitely and linkedin i would as well so audio i do anchor.fm it'll push it automatically to 10 podcasting platforms and it's free written and images it would be the brand website.com forward slash blog so the digital foundation would come from the website 
currently they have a website, but it's just a, and more informational than anything. But one thing they do have that I really appreciate it and makes me think that adding on the additional capabilities wouldn't be out of the realm of the possibility is because they have the ability to put your free ads. There's a contact form on there so you can very easily and quickly submit your free ad to them because they let you run free personal ads, I think it is. That was a good thing, but that's the only real thing you can accomplish. You can't pay for any of the ads. You can't sign up for a recurring setup or anything like that from the actual website. And I think you should, and that you should be able to see your account, right? On the website, using your phone or whatever, just at your leisure. So the website is the core of this strategy and it's, it's to offer friction-free ad sales is kind of how I put it. Now understand when I say website planning, people freak out and think, oh my God, that's so much stuff. And it's really not. The way that I've learned over 12 years plus now to organize it is I start at the homepage. I'm using Essence Pro. It's a Genesis theme by studiopress.com. I've been using their stuff for years and years. And what it allows me to do is just get going really easily and I know that I'll have to fill out the navigation menus and make sure any pages I want on those menus will, and, and I told, typically put one at the top and one at the bottom of every page. And then I know that I'll have to do the widget areas and I'll need to make sure that the pages on the menus are actually populated as well. So there's kind of secondary pages, but that's really it. And I don't try and have every, a thousand pages to start. I'm happy to start with three or four or five in addition to that home page because from there, you can add millions of pages if you want, but the key is you got to get started, right? And you got to have it to where it's interactive for people so they're able to accomplish stuff on their time using it. So the other part, other two parts of the getting your website rolling, the way that I do it is I approach the digital catalog. So in this instance, we'd have the products, which would be the different ad rates that they want to do. If it's, you know, full page cover, quarter page or you know, whatever. As far as WooCommerce plugins, there may very well be some that would add additional functionality that they would want within their store, basically their e-com experience. But definitely one they would want would be the Zapier WooCommerce plugin. It's premium and it allows you to pipe all of those actions from WooCommerce over to Drift because it goes through Zapier over and sends it to Drift. And Drift is the live chat and the email version that handles the customer conversation. So the other part is you want your media archive, the owned media to be there on the website, right? So the blog, and then you'd also have the video, the audio as well. You'd have each of those archived there. So this is the demo, it's a working demo. So if you go to jasonhobbsllc.com forward slash example dash 17, that's one seven, you'll be able to go through this working demo that I've thrown together. And that, if you scroll down on the homepage, here's the bottom part, and you can see that there's three main pages that are featured, and then they have the ability to log in or register their account. And once they do log in, that area there is replaced with their account. So the customer conversation, I would add live chat and email with Drift, it's 50 bucks a month. And then you have the in-person and the phone, and I would just put all that data onto customer timelines within Drift. So the campaigns is the fifth portion of how I organize stuff. And this is one that's always in flux. This is a, all five I view as a living document, right? So we document the strategy that we put together. And the last part is the campaigns. And typically you're gonna add to those and those will finish. And a lot, in most cases, you're gonna start the next iteration of that campaign, right? Well, there's three main categories of campaigns that I do. It's getting attention, which is everywhere but your website. That could be organic, that could be paid ads, that could be influencers, that could be any number of options. And then on your website, keeping attention, that's the second campaign category is keeping attention. That happens on your website, in your live chat, through your email. And then the third one, the, the third category is administrative. So that's just the foundational stuff to make sure that your brand's website has a quality relationship with search engines and with people and you know so forth and other websites and 
So, all right. So the first campaign to get attention that I do is I'd start with the origin story and I tell the origin story of the Georgia shopper that runs the five different edition areas. And then from there, you just go into the different area content in my mind, but you use that origin story as kind of a way to introduce them and introduce their new digital component as well. So keep attention. I'd start with an email list and I would make sure that we talk to them. We'd send them an individual email with one message, one story, one call to action as well. One link basically each week. So the foundation campaign, I'd start with local citations because showing up on the map in Google, et cetera, is a good thing. I'd start by cleaning up and building their local citations as well as just their accounts across the different places. And brightlocal.com, local citation builder service will do that for you for like five bucks a site. And they'll take care of the name, address, and phone number, but they'll also provide a full description and a short description, as well as a gallery of images and a featured image and so forth, just depending on what each of the different places that would have your profile requires or asks for or whatever. So that's example 17. How much would it cost if you want to DIY it? Around 748 again to start and then around 229 from there. The 39 a month for Liquid Web's beginner managed WooCommerce hosting, 50 bucks a month for Drift. That's the two live chat operators and it includes the email as well. 100 bucks for Wistia for the video hosting and analytics for putting stuff on the actual brand website. GatherUp.com for a customer feedback loop. Yoast.com is a premium search engine optimization plugin for WordPress. It's just going to make it easier for search engines to know as they put media out what it is, how to understand it so that they can connect it with people that would actually want to view that, right? And then the Soapbox by Wistia, it's 300 bucks. It's a Chrome extension that I'm using to record this video and I record all my examples using it. So it just dropped it simple and works really well. 130 bucks for the studiopress.com, that uh, theme. Again, questions, Jason at jasonopsllc.com. 912-381-6318 is my mobile. If I don't know your number, leave a message. I always get back as soon as possible. You can also text me and uh you know give me some context as far as as you introduce yourself to start the conversation so thank you and the next one will be number 18 it will come out on monday the 24th i think 